On projects, sometimes we can have negotiations and discussions where we end up in positions of mutual disadvantage. This happens a lot in testing when we're working with project managers, and we're going to discuss how to avoid that in this video. So I read Peter Lomas's book, The Limits of Interpretation. There's a chapter called The Misuse of Therapeutic Power. And in there, there's a paragraph that makes a lot of sense to me from a testing perspective, because it's, it's very much, you could re read this paragraph in terms of testing. So I'm going to go over this paragraph in here. But one of the things that was really important in that paragraph is he says that psychotherapists must be able to stand firm in the face of attempts to coerce them to mutual disadvantage. So the patient will try and coerce the psychotherapist in a position of mutual disadvantage where the psychotherapist doesn't tell the, the, the truth, doesn't say the right things, doesn't give the right advice because the person convinces them that that would be bad for them, bad for their situation, bad for their context, bad for the timing, bad for everything else. Now this is a paragraph that's fairly universal and could apply to pretty much any situation but <laughs> it mapped on so well to some of the things that have happened to me as a tester and as a test manager and having strategies to deal with these situations where we're trying to negotiate a difficult situation can be hard. So I'm going to take this paragraph, I'm going to work through it because it builds on it builds on itself. And it's really talking about the attitude of testing. And this is one of the reasons why I study psychotherapy because there's so many mappings back on the testing. So the paragraph is on page 147 of the second edition, 2001, Limits of Interpretation. And it's in the misuse of therapeutic power. The book has spent time investigating the relationship between psychotherapists and patients because very often psychotherapy has the notion of processes, fixed approaches, fixed ideals of how to model uh, patients and fixed theories as to how they can develop. So you've got Freudian theories, you've got Jungian theories with architects, Freudian with the uh, basic buildup of the, the structure from childhood and, and before. You've got um, character armor from Reichian type therapy. A whole bunch of concepts that apply directly onto the system. And this is trying to make the case for a more relationship type approach, a more contextual approach where the psychotherapist has to have a blank slate for the client when they come in to develop a model of that client. And this is one of the things that's covered a lot in brief therapies. But in here, this paragraph is, it says psychotherapy relies on honesty, right? Fundamentally, the psychotherapist has to explain their models of the patient to the patient, why they think certain things are happening what attitudes are in the patient that the psychotherapist believes are driving certain behaviours, which behaviours the patient is doing are leading to certain effects that they're getting, like honesty in terms of the model, because that then leads them to ask different questions. And if they're dishonest on it, then the patient no longer trusts them and will no longer confide in them. And the relationship is very important. And this happens on projects too, where testing is, is fundamentally about honesty. If we as testers brought in certain risks or issues because higher level management wanted them and they were trying to influence the team through testers, that would be a dishonest approach that wouldn't help build trust between the testers and the rest of the team, would degrade the relationships, etc, etc. So, and honesty kind of ties back into, we have limits to what we know in testing because there are tests that we've conducted, there are experiments that we've carried out, there are observations that we've made, there are conclusions that we have drawn, there is evidence that we can present, there are limits based on what we have done, what we have seen, and what we can present as we have investigated this and we can justify what we're saying in these terms. We have to be honest about what things are extrapolated from that, what conclusions we are drawn, what kind of uh, statements are based on fact, and what are based on opinion, right? Honesty around that whole communication process. Paragraph goes on. If we are able to help someone, we must not be afraid to confront them with unpalatable truths. And fundamentally, that's often what testing is. Right? Information that we provide is sometimes unpalatable truth. We can provide 
data that everyone is comfortable with because it's what they expected. We can log in. Everyone knew that we could log in. They're happy with that. When we fail to log in six times, we are automatically entered in the system. If we uh, fail to put in a password, we are automatically entered in the system. That's an unpalatable truth that people don't want to know. And it's new information because it wasn't in their model. And it's harder for people to accept that some things have gone wrong. We must be able to stand firm in the face of their attempts to coerce us to our mutual disadvantage. So if you're convinced that's not a bug, someone says to you, that's not a bug. And you go, okay, that's not a bug. I will drop it. If that is actually a bug, you have entered a position of mutual disadvantage. They were able to hide their head in the sand. You found something, you ignored it. You put yourself in a vulnerable position because you, you gave up <laughs> valid information. This happens a lot. I mean, this is a negotiation process. If we're talking about this in the real world. We talk about negotiation. We wouldn't talk about psychotherapy and relationships like that. We talk about a negotiation process because someone's trying to say, I don't think what you find is a bug. I would like you to drop it and not report it. You think it is a bug. Therefore, a negotiation process takes place. Now, if you have evidence, if you are saying, I, I won't raise it as a bug, but I'll document it in my testing notes as a potential issue, but we're not tracking it yet. And I'll, I'll say we've had this discussion and I'll say that, and I'll put the time down when we did it. Then you're negotiating, but you're covering yourself and you're not putting yourself in a mutual disadvantage because you're documenting what that is. Now, you might still disadvantage the project because it's information that possibly should. And sometimes you have to stand more firm. Now, this is a, a personal decision that you have to make within projects. And it, I think it becomes easier as you go up the, the ranks in terms of age, like you get older, um, so you, you take less um, hassle from people. Um, you have more responsibility on projects, you become a test lead, test manager, and it's your job to stand more firm. As a tester, sometimes you feel that your job isn't necessarily to stand firm. Sometimes you feel your job is to advocate, but having advocated and made the case for, if the team decide not to proceed with it, then you decide to drop it and go along with the team decision. That can still lead to mutual disadvantage. You always have control over your domain. So your personal domain in terms of note taking and tracking your work, you can you always have control over that. So you can always put down the accurate statement of what you're doing, even if as a team you decide to negotiate away from the, the bluntness and absolutism or the exactitude that is in, in your notes. We might attempt to do that as a team. People work in, in different ways. Now, the reason this is in the misuse of therapeutic power chapter is because the therapist, so very often a one-to-one -one relationship here. You've got therapist, patient. Sometimes there's group therapy or family therapy, and then it's, it's a wider dynamic. But we have the issue that sometimes you're on a project itself and you're a team member on that project and then you have equal rights of everyone else in terms of the power of influence that you have and you should be able to stress your points as strongly as anyone else on the team that includes team leads project managers if we view people as equal then you have equal rights to do that and then you can fight hard for certain situations if you're a consultant then you might step back a little bit because you the more that you attempt to coerce your point of view, which might be different from the teams, might be viewed as a misuse of the influence that you have as a consultant because you constantly want to give the team autonomy because your aim is to, is, to, is to get yourself out there so they don't need you. So you have to develop their autonomy. You have to develop their strength of decision-making, their strength of evaluating evidence, their skills, make them aware of what their strengths are and, and trust in them and help them boost those powers. So sometimes you've got a different dynamic when you're in as a consultant than when you're in as a team member. And it's the same with a therapist. The therapist is not part of the patient's life. So it's much more of a consultancy style engagement. And it's one of the reasons why I read this type of material because I'm a consultant. But I've been reading it since I was a tester because the dynamics are important and the influencing skills are important and the rationales behind influence and how far you go are important. So we have to stand firm because they're attempting to coerce us to mutual disadvantage where neither of us wins and it's a negotiation process. Psychotherapy is not a practice that can avoid bluntness of speech. 
This is important. Very often we talk in terms of uh, business speak. So if we're writing a, if we're forced to write a test strategy or a test approach, it will be very often written in business speak because that's, those are all the examples we see online. Those are all the templates we have. Those are the structured documents that we see get created through a business, but they, they're not readable. They're not blunt. They're not exact. They can be incredibly ambiguous. Sometimes they're designed to be ambiguous, to give you wiggle room in later um, blame games. So the more ambiguous you make it, the more wiggle room you have. If you're, if you're not trying to play politics, then making your stuff as blunt as possible, as simple as possible, avoiding ambiguity, then it helps. So we want to make our communication as clear as possible. And the paragraph goes on. This fact does not, however, obviate our responsibilities to treat the other person with continuous respect. This, <laughs> this can be so hard on projects when you're on an antagonistic project and the project manager wants to um, reduce time for certain things and you're a test manager and not on the project and you're trying to fight for more time and more budget and there's only a limited budget on the um, entire project and the, the director, the program manager is trying to balance things out but has got a deadline to meet and everyone has got all these different viewpoints of the project and they've got their own positions to maintain. And it's very easy under those heated circumstances to... Uh, lose sight of the fact that they have a different perspective on the project and we have to respect that in our dealings with them. So uh, it's, it's kind of like an, an empathy thing. We have to understand what their position is, how they are viewing the situation. And that might mean tailoring the uh, evidence or limits of knowledge that we have to them specifically to help them understand your position better. But the fundamental thing I think is we have to understand we're in a negotiation and every time we're in a negotiation and we say we want to reduce the time given to testing, that's fine in a negotiation stance. It means that something else gives up. So we don't do as much testing. We reduce the number of people on. We don't attempt to automate at the same time because we don't have time for it, which means that going forward, we lose the ability to check for changes as quickly. All these kind of trade-offs are what we end up discussing. So we don't avoid, we don't end up in mutual disadvantage. We end up at a position of understood limits in what we have agreed to do through negotiation. The paragraph goes on. We treat the other person with continued respect to heart them as little as possible. That's fine. We want to maintain relationships and to consider fully the possible harmful effects of our interventions. Now, this is an interesting point in the sense that very often we don't think of reporting issues or risks as interventions, but they are. They're outside the norm of what we're doing. We're trying to um, intervene in the process by pointing out that something is going wrong, we might want to change tag. Or here is new information, you have to change your model. We are attempting to intervene with much of our testing communication. So one way of attempting to avoid um, harmful effects is when we communicate, avoiding terms like should, must, is, the absolute requirement type phrasing when we communicate, right? We should test everything in this area, otherwise we will get defects, right? We have no evidence for that. We have no, it's not, if we say we should, we're trying to force our viewpoint upon someone else. If you say we could drop this and do this instead, we're offering options. We're exploring possibilities. And if we can provide evidence for the limits, right? What we will not do because we have cut back on something, then we're helping people build a different model. And the clearer model that you can give people in their heads, that honesty of um, here is my honest model and the viewpoint that I am taking, understand this so you can then make decisions based from the overriding concerns that you have, right? A project manager ultimately is going to be concerned about the drop dead delivery date of this project and we have to absolutely meet this. Therefore, we have to cut back on something that's going to take up too much time, then explore the risks around what we're dropping out and make assessments on that. But you don't fight in terms of, we should do all the testing. We should have um, this level of coverage. We must do this. 
that's not how we approach the fighting of it because that can have harmful effects of an intervention. So our communication around this is really important. Now, I understand this is a really small paragraph to have spent I don't know, 15 minutes on or something, but there's so much in there that ties in with the relationships and negotiation and communication that takes place on a team, regardless of whether it's a waterfall project, a fixed time project, an agile project, these kind of communications happen all the time. Don't write a test for that. Don't cover that acceptance criteria. We're not covering that test condition yet. You have control constantly of yourself and your area. Regardless of what negotiations take place, you can always make that your most clear model in your test reports. You can always have that. You never have to be in a position of complete disadvantage. Understand that negotiations will take place and you will have to give ground. We just don't want it to lead to mutual massive disadvantage. We don't want people going, we've only got a fixed limit of time, therefore we have to cut the testing down. And you have to still do the same amount. And you don't go, yes, because that leads you to a massive mutual disadvantage where you know you are not going to get all the testing done, you're not going to get the coverage. You've said you will, so that person goes away confident that um, even though the time has been restricted, you're still going to do everything. They've got the wrong opinion, you haven't been honest, they've got the wrong model of the world, you're going away knowing that it can't happen, you've got the wrong model of the world, you can't then communicate that to the people who are going to do the work. Everyone loses under those circumstances. So negotiate with honesty, consider your language, keep it as simple as possible and do the best thing you can because you're trying to help people. That's the role on the project and you're not, if you're a team member on that project, you're also trying to help yourself because you're part of that system. So make sure you don't lose sight of that and hit a mutual disadvantage. So if you're interested in these kind of videos, remember to subscribe. We talk about testing and how we can improve our testing on this channel.